So I would like to call to order the meeting of the Building and Operating Committee of Thursday, June 22, 2023. Before we begin, please note this meeting is being recorded. Welcome to my colleagues and everyone joining us here in person as well as those listening in on the phone. If you would like to provide public comment at today's meeting, and if you have not already done so, please let Thomas in the back of the room or Justine on the phone know what items you would like to speak on today. Madam Secretary, please begin by calling the roll. Thank you. Sorry, Thomas isn't here today. Today we have Dean with us in the back. Sorry, Dean. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to start with Director Cochran. Here. Director Conroy is absent. Director Parr. Present. Director Rabbit. Here. Director Thier is absent. Vice Chair Mastin. Chair Garbarino. Here. And President Terrio. Right here. Thank you. You have a quorum, but you are not a committee of the whole, but of course you can invite comments and, and questions from all the members that are present. Oh, absolutely. And welcome them. Thank you again. And after our discussion, we will ask for public comment before moving on. Please follow along by referring to the page numbers located at the bottom right-hand corner of your meeting packet. We will begin with agenda item number three, which is to approve actions relative to award of contract number 2022F014, Larkspur Ferry Terminal Fuel Tanks Rehabilitation to Euro Style Management. The staff report begins on page three, and please welcome District Engineer Ava Bauer-Furbish here to present the report. Go ahead, Ava. Chair Garbarino, members of the committee, good morning. Agenda item number three, staff report, presents staff recommendation regarding rehabilitation of the Laxpool Ferry Terminal Fuel Farm. This farm is used to fuel ferry vessels carrying passengers on ferry routes connecting Marine County and the city and county of San Francisco. The fuel farm consists of four above ground steel diesel fuel storage tanks. Uh, the tanks were originally installed in 1974 and then they were upgraded in 1998. However, in 2019, ferry operations staff noticed excessive clogging of fuel filters. And it was determined that the clogging was caused by a new formulation of renewable diesel fuel uh, that the fuel vendor did not did without the district's knowledge. So in 2020, the district completed an emergency project to return one of the four tanks, tank number two, to service by removing the existing fuel, cleaning sludge from accumulate, that accumulated at the bottom of the tank, and refilling the tank with new diesel fuel. Uh, at the same time, um, the, uh, the fuel was drained from the remaining three tanks, but uh, to bring this them back to service, it requires cleaning, cleaning the sludge, and um, tank walls before refueling them with new fuel. So the engineering staff developed plans and specifications for a construction contract, contract 2022F14, Laxpur Ferry Terminal Fuel Tanks Rehabilitation, to clean tanks one, three, and four to perform a full inspection of the interiors of all four tanks and to apply a new protective coating to the interiors of all four tanks. On April uh, 11, 2023, the bid solicitation documents were advertised. While 20 firms downloaded the solic solicitation documents from the district's procurement portal, in addition to additional outreach that we did, on the bid opening date of May 23, 2023, only one bid was, was received. It was a bid from Eurostyle Management of Sacramento, California, in an amount of $1,213,400. The engineering staff, disadvantaged business enterprise program administrator and attorney evaluated the bid proposal based upon criteria that was specified in the bid solicitation. 
engineering staff perform a cost analysis of the bid, comparing the bid pricing to the engineer's estimate that was prepared prior to the contract being advertised for the, for the bid. Uh, the bid proposal is approximately 33% lower than the engineer's estimate, and it is mainly because the bid price for fuel waste disposal is lower than in the engineer's estimate. The engineer's estimate accounted for the price uncertainty when the engineer's estimate was made by using a higher price. The pricing of other bid items is comparable to the engineer's estimate. Based on this, staff has determined that Eurostyle Euro management pricing for the work is fair and reasonable. Engineering staff um, perform uh, outreach to a number of firms that did not submit a bid and determined that various business reasons accounted for the lack of bid submissions. Among those reasons, um, there was too much risk, there was perception of too much risk having to manage different subcontractors or subcontractors not be able to team with a general contractor. In all, none of the reasons provi provided were related to the specifications being too restrictive or limiting competition. A small business enterprise contract specific goal of 6% was established for this contract. The DBE program administrator has determined that Eurostyle management is a certified SBE and has complied with the DBE SBE program requirements applicable to this contract. At this time, SBE participation of approximately 91.1% is anticipating during performance of this contract. The engineering staff and attorney review bid proposals for completeness and conformance with the bid solicitation requirements and determined that Eurostyle management is a responsive and responsible bidder. Staff recommends award of contract number 2022F14 to Eurostyle management with a bid price of $1,213,400. Uh, staff also recommends that the contingency in amount of $182,010 or 15% of the construction contract's total price be established for this contract considering a uh, possibility, possibility of unforeseen circumstances arising during construction of this project. Uh, this project is uh, included in the fiscal year 2023 Ferry Division Capital Budget in the amount of $2 million and is 80% FTA and 20% district funded. There are sufficient funds in, in the project budget to finance the project construction. So with this, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the committee may have for me. Thank you very much. Yes, let me call on Jim in just one sec and other colleagues. And I just wanted to, Amaret is reminding me, we are a committee of the whole now. So I'll make that announcement. Jim, go ahead. <clears throat> so was there or is there any recourse available to the district uh, against the fuel vendor? So what happened, um, uh, like any other case of, of, of this uh, nature, it's not so straightforward. Yeah, there's, they step up and they paid for the cleaning of that one time. However, there were other issues related to the district using the tank. So we decided just to settle this way. And uh, however, yes, they paid for this emergency project that was initially put in place. Great, thank you. Are there any? Yes, David. I think purging sludge from our tanks is something that I encourage all of us to, uh, to do. Um, I was, um, are these tanks uh, otherwise up to snuff in terms of, uh, yes. I'm kind of worried about, I, I noticed a single wall but they have a, a, uh, they have a uh, containment, containment. Um, okay. yeah. concrete so containment. In a way, they have a double containment there to okay. prevent a spill. So we're but good there. We don't have to add anything to that. Everything that needs to be added is being added as part of the project with respect <clears throat> to some of the data that's collected. But uh, you, your concern is appropriate. It is 300,000 gallons of renewable diesel fuel. 
that is stored immediately adjacent to San Francisco Bay. Um, and it, they are single wall steel tanks, but there is a huge concrete you know, bathtub around that so that if there were an unfortunate event at the tanks, it would be an issue. Uh, the lines are another challenge and a separate challenge that you know we're cognizant of also, and we have systems in place for those too. Great, thanks. So all these upgrades that Dennis mentioned, they were uh, done in, in 1998. Right, any other questions, Aviva? No? Um, wonderful, this concludes our discussion on item number three, but before we take our vote, is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Justine, we don't have anyone in the room that wants to speak. We have no one from the public. Do you have anyone on the line wishing to speak on this item, item number three? We have no one for this item. Thank you. Okay. We have no speakers. Okay. Thank you, ladies and everyone and my colleagues. May I have a motion, please, on agenda item number three to approve actions relative to award of contract number 2022F014 to Euro Style Management? So moved, Rabbit. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Thank you. Now that we're committed a whole, I'll be rolling down the entire list. But we have a first and second for item number three, starting with Director Conroy, who's absent. <clears throat> Dorsey is absent. And Guardio is absent. Garbarino? Aye. Judice? Yes. Grosbull is absent. Hernandez is absent. Aston? Aye. Moulton Peters is absent. Parr? Aye. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni? Aye. Seth I. is absent. Snyder? Aye. Stephanie is absent. Beer is absent. Second Vice President Hill? First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. You have 10 eyes. Thank you, Amaret. That motion passes. We will now move on to item number four on the agenda, which is to approve actions relative to contract number 2017-D30, San Rafael Transportation Center Relocation Analysis, Environmental Clearance, and Preliminary Design with Kimley Horn and Associates. The staff report begins on page seven, and Director of Planning Ron Dowling will present this report. Go right ahead, Ron. Good morning, Chair Garbarino, members of the committee. Uh, Ray Santiago, the project manager for this study, is actually fighting something off, and I found out at seven o'clock this morning that he was unable to make the meeting, so here I am. Good morning, all. Uh, the item before you um, requests your recommendation to the Board of Directors to transfer $271,421 from the project contingency to the project operating budget to allow for completion of this project. Um, the remaining elements of this project right now should be wrapped up within approximately six months. Kimley Horn um, has just embarked on the Community Design Advisory Group component of this study. We had our first meeting on Tuesday evening this week. Uh, well attended, a lot of enthusiasm. We selected members of the community to come forward and give us their thoughts as to what the architectural style, the design elements, the amenities such as shelters, lighting stanchions, trash cans, uh, shelter canopies, uh, the open plaza space should look like. So it's a very engaging process. Uh, we expect that to carry into the early fall. Um, Combined with that, once we get some direction from the committee, uh, Kimley Horn will be preparing preliminary engineering to the uh, percentage of about 30% design uh, with input from this committee. They will also be um, embarking on an LEED certified uh, design for our new customer service building. So with all of that, we wanna put some additional money into the project uh, so that they have an appropriate resources to bring it home at the end of the year. Um, we're also engaging the Federal Transit Administration in conversations beginning next week. Um, you all would recall that we had uh, the board certified our environmental document, our FEIR, in December. And so moving that forward, um, going to the Federal Transit Administration to um, find out what they would need for a NEPA clearance so we can embark on accessing federal funds for the project. So with that, um, the transfer would be $272,421. Our DBE administrator has certified that this would bring the project compliance um, up to 25.7% of the project. So definitely within, within the requirements. So um, as I said, no additional funding is necessary for this action. It is already contained in the fiscal 22-23 bus division capital budget and we'll be rolled over into next year's budget. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
and then for stepping in. Um, are there any questions or comments from other directors as well? We start with Jim. Um, are property owners or business owners who are directly affected by this uh, considered stakeholders? We have had inquiries from property owners. There will be another phase of this project moving forward under a separate contract to assess the real estate needs and begin that process. We're not quite there yet. We'll be bringing a couple things forward in the coming months. That will be one of them. We will also have a separate contract to do final engineering once we get into probably early 2024. But the answer is yes. Um, we have, we've identified all the parcels in their totality in the environmental document that was put out publicly and was finally approved. So the parcels have been identified, but we have not started conversations with the property owners yet because we're waiting FTA approval to do so. Okay. Um, but I might add that the community design advisory group meeting that occurred on Thursday <coughs> occurred uh, in a space that we leased from one of the property owners that is impacted by the project. Okay. So we clearly are in conversations with them. Okay. Thank you. I might just piggyback on that. Was it October or November when we went to City of San Rafael yes. public hearing, a preliminary public hearing, and it, it was very positive? Yeah, I, I, I want to give a shout out to the City of San Rafael. You know, we're a large regional agency coming into the heart of their downtown doing a project. And so this took a little longer than we originally anticipated, but we we're probably overly optimistic. And so we have had more process, and that's really part of the reason why we're here today seeking this, is because we took the time to work with the city, to work with the community. They've been great partners. Uh, the city helped us uh, identify members of the community to be on this design advisory group. It's not your typical community uh, design review board with a couple of retired local architects. It's people from the neighborhood, from the canal, people that ride the bus. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> so we work with some identified folks, and we're really proud of the process we have to work with the community to help shape what the transit center looks like because it's really for them. And I'm sorry, I might also add, I had a conversation with Omar Carreras of the Canal Alliance. Um, they will be buying or have purchased some property nearby, but they also operate in the canal. Um, and it was on a different topic, but he mentioned how pleased he was with the process and its inclusivity as well. Yeah, I was thinking mainly of like Chase Bank and the pizza parlor and all those who are potentially going to be displaced. And Not touching the pizza parlor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you can still get kicking chicken. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all are good. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay. That concludes discussion on item number four. Before we take our vote, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? We have no speakers here in the room. Justine, do you have any speakers on this item number four? We have no speakers on this item. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Colleagues, may I have a motion on agenda item number four to approve actions relative to contract number 2017-D30? Also move. May I have a second? I'll second. second. Thank you. And Amaret, roll call vote, please. Thank you. We have a first and a second on item number four, starting with Director Conroy is absent, Director Dorsey is absent, Director Angardio is absent, Garbarino. Aye. Judah Che? Yes. Grossville is absent, Hernandez is absent, Mastin? Yes. Moulton Peters is absent, R? Yes. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni? Aye. Safai is absent, Snyder? Aye. Stephanie is absent, Thier is absent, Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Cheerio? Yes. Thank you. You have 10 noise. Wonderful. Thank you. That motion passes. We will now continue on to item number five, which is where I'll fall on my face, which is an informal monthly report from board appointees of the Sonoma Marin Area Rail Transit Board. And I'll start off with the report. As, as you all may already know, it's been uh, two months since we've had uh, a BNO uh, committee meeting, so this will take only about 45 minutes for me to update you on these <laughs> meetings that we've had. Um, and I will start with the meeting of April 19th, unless you'd like me to start with something more recent. How about if I start with something more recent, which was yesterday, which was wonderful. And um, actually, no, I'm going to go back to May 17th. And in that meeting, we discussed a number of projects, including uh, improvements to Highway 37, in which um, 
if you've traveled that way eastbound, there is there was a significant dip in the road. Uh, a great healthy discussion around parking utilization. Um, that's when also uh, General Manager Eddie Cummins was able to declare that we had reached. Sorry, Dennis. Number one status in recovery from COVID for a transit agency in the Bay Area. And actually, that's part of my report from yesterday's meeting. We've achieved it two, two months in a row, I believe. So that's all good. Great deal of discussion about pathway improvements. Uh, the Starlighter service, which began on May 4th as well, which is an evening service, uh, mostly on the weekend, as I recall. Um, and um, still doing some studying on peak travel times and first and last mile. Um, also great link linkages to the ferry, to our ferry, in order to get people to the Giants game and other wonderfulness that happens once you get on the ferry. In yesterday's meeting, we also discussed um, contracts that were let of anything over um, $100,000. And again, ridership, second month in a row, um, when ridership was the highest in the Bay Area. Um, and actually, he gave us another wonderful statistic. Uh, from May 2019 to present, SMART is experiencing over 102% um, improvement of, or 102% over May of 2019. Isn't it awful when you can't read your own minute, yeah, notes? Um, service schedule changes. They are adding two weekend routes, uh, making it five minutes later again to further sync and connect with the ferries. County fair service will also, uh, service will increase because the county fair is coming up. Free youth summer service. And in the first half, of June, it started June 1st, they've carried over 4,000 young people, which is huge, right? This is why we're all doing it and making sure, giving them the want and the need that they've asked for, and that's mass transit. Um, overnight parking on June 16th uh, was dropped to $5, and um, that also helps get people uh, uh, economically to be able to use not only the, the um, parking lot, but the um, train as well. And the ribbon cutting was highly successful at the Santa Rosa airport. Were you there? Yes, I was. Do you have a comment? It was wonderful. It was fantastic. You know, and Eddie mentioned that he's more than happy to, to share that technology with other jurisdictions and stuff. And, and, and there's a great need for it up in, you know, we run a park. So it was, it was just, it, it was very inspiring actually. You know, I mean, last mile, I mean, that's, that's gotta be the focus, right? Moving forward. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Barb. I don't know if you can all see it. I'd happy to pass around, but it's a bright orange van. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. not like subtle, <laughs> no, so that you have not. to look for it. it and we have a reason. We have a feeling we know why it's bright orange, but yes. we won't go there. <laughs> it's Eddie's favorite color. It is Eddie's favorite color. What does it do? Um, it will take people no longer having to get off at the stop nearest the airport. For instance, it's you can take see them actually from there to the airport. To the airport, they've been schlepping yeah. their suitcases a mile to get to the airport. There was also some talk of wouldn't it be great now people can go to wineries, breweries, and uh, which is all good. Now they're not having to drive to wineries and breweries, so that's all good. Yeah, and and they showed a map. I bet the, there's a map on the website, and the map is huge of how far the EV shuttle will take you. Um, there are two or three ways to access it. You can access it online. There's a phone number you can use. Just pick up your phone and, and access it. Um, it's a miracle. Yeah. Right, Bert? Yes, this is very exciting. <laughs> it does have a driver, but we'll get there later. <laughs> Jim? Yeah, what my complaint has always been that there's no overnight parking there. But Fix that. You think yeah, there is? Yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That was part of the deal. No, oh, because I was yeah. going to say, well, the airport's not going to like it, but you can park at the airport now and and take the take the shuttle. Um, Actually, at any of the yeah. smart properties, at any of the smart park and rides that we own the property, um, you can have overnight parking for five dollars. Great, I missed that. Thank you. At, I think there's six at the airport. It's how much is it? 
Oh, I now, I think. Is it five dollars at the airport too, or just in our parking lot? So oh, I don't know what it is for the airport. I don't do airport. Oh, it'll be five dollars soon. I was going to say, man, that's a hell, hell of a yeah. parking yeah. deal for overnight. Yeah, yeah. That, could, that could be a deal. So, yeah. I think Anything the else anyone would yeah. like to add? Or? We'll just add on the uh, the airport itself is um, doing gangbuster yeah. business, yeah. and it's actually exceeded pre-pandemic numbers, <laughs> so it's continuing to grow. Uh, which is a good thing for the shuttle. I think the other thing that was out there, um, and of course we we have our fingers crossed, but uh, there's a $30 million, 30 million solutions uh, for congested corridors recommendation for SMART coming up to a vote, a, a staff recommendation to approve it coming up before that board in a week or two, uh, shortly. So that's that's huge. And that's one of the puzzle pieces as we talk about for going uh, further north to Windsor and on to Healdsburg. So really, uh, fingers crossed on that one. And oh, sorry. I just want to clarify. So the shuttle, you can pick you up at the airport and brings you to the station, and vice versa. And vice versa. Is yeah. it, and it, what is it cost free? Then? Oh, like a dollar fifty. I was going to say a dollar seventy. Okay, something, something like that. Nothing reasonable. So the summer will be huge, right? That's all good. It's a fairly big van, too. I was shocked at how big the. I'll leave my phone on. It will carry a lot of luggage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good right. thing. Yeah. And that um, also brings SMART up to 38 weekday trips and 12 weekend trips. So happy to answer any questions or provide additional information. As you can see, I can go on with the good news for about a half hour, but I won't. And there you have it. Now we are going to move on to um, our next item, which is, oh, is there anyone from the public that wants to speak on the SMART report? I don't believe so. I will double check with Justine. Justine, do you have anyone who'd like to speak or a public comment on item number five? Not for this item. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, no action, as you know, is required for item number five. So we'll continue on to item number six, the status report on engineering projects. Beginning on page 13, and Ava will present her report. Thank you, Ava. Thank you very much. And um, my written report is before you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions the committee may have for me. Thank you. Colleagues, are there any questions for Ava on her engineering report? No. There is no action associated with this item. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item or address the committee? We have no one in the room again. Justine, do you have someone on the line that would like to comment on item number six? We do. We have David Topel this morning. David, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great. Uh, good morning, David Pilpel. Um, so I didn't have any substantive comments on item uh, three, but I did want to say that I like the way the story was told uh, in that item. Maybe it should have been done uh, sooner, but regardless, uh, my um, uh, point there was the, the story was well told in the staff report. Um, on this uh, item, the engineering uh, project status uh, report, I asked last month uh, to have the notice to proceed date and projected substantial completion uh, date uh, for construction projects uh, where relevant. I'm trying to get a better sense, uh, particularly for projects that are in construction, if they are, you know, three month or three year um, projects. It doesn't have to have a specific uh, substantial completion date, but just the you know, the notice to proceed was given in November of uh, 2022, and the project is expected to wrap up uh, in July of 2024. Something like that, um, I think, might be helpful. Um, and that's all on the engineering um, project status report. I may have some other comments that I drafted last month, but I um, had them ready to go in a letter and did not finalize that primarily on transportation uh, issues, so I hope to finalize that and uh, send it to the district uh, soon. Thanks for hearing me on b &L. Appreciate it. Welcome, David. Great. Thank you. Yes. Oh, uh, I do have a related question. Yes. Uh, where are we with the elevator? I can tell you the short answer. We're sealing the pit. <laughs> sealing the pit. 
sealing the pit. That's exactly. So um, the we plan to do the sealing and uh, pouring of additional concrete at the bottom of the pit next week. Um, the work will take about three days. But then there is the second issue related to sump pump that has to be upgraded. And this uh, sump pump and the, uh, the uh, special equipment associated with it takes about four weeks lead time to receive. But we hope to get it in um, end of, by end of July and uh, do the installation at the beginning of August. Hopefully. So we will have at least two more months uh, as vagabonds. Exploring the district. Exploring the district. Your t-shirts with all the places. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for that report. Another question, Bird? Are we moving to St. Paul for the next two meetings? Yeah. Have we ever had a meeting in Yes. Yes. That was quick. Well, wonderful report. Yeah, if I may yes. to add something for Mr. Papel to answer his request Certainly. for the related to our construction project information. Um, the last page of the engineer's report has a table that lists all um, current uh, active construction projects. And after issuing notice to proceed, you can find the date of the notice to proceed in that table. What it also provides is the contract number of working days or calendar days. It doesn't have the completion date, but you can uh, basically calculate on assess how long the project should take. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I was remiss in not also including item number seven, um, which is public comment. Um, and I'm just wondering if my colleagues have any comments about public comment or if there's anyone in the room that would like to um, comment on public comment or anyone on the phone who would like to comment on public comment. Justine, do we have any other speakers for public comment? We have no other public speakers. For this okay. Thank you. Yeah, right yes, Bert. I just want to thank David Pilpel for, for his thorough analysis of things and, and suggestions. I think it's a very positive thing when the, when the uh, uh, public participates okay. as much as he is. David, we're hoping you heard that. <laughs> we'll send a note. Okay. Uh, thank you. We've reached the end of the agenda. May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second? Second. I'm sure I'm hearing no objections. This concludes the meeting of the Building and Operating Committee. Thank you, colleagues. The time is 934.